This video is going to teach you all you need to know about the polygonal lasso tool in Photoshop. What it is, where to find it, how to use it. Don't go away. Hi there, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography, founder and creator of Photographer's Freedom, giving you the time, gear and skills to be the best photographer you can be. Welcome to my channel and thank you for watching this video today. Here on my channel, I do photography tutorials, Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials, camera gear reviews and other photography related things. So if that sounds like something that might interest you, please subscribe and ding the notification bell. If you're after more tutorials, and camera gear reviews and also information related to photography business, head on over to photographersfreedom.com. There's a stack of information over there, all aimed at helping you to be the best photographer you can be. Right now, let's get into the content. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I've got this image of this rather cool building open here. This is a great image for this tutorial because it's got a lot of polygons in the shape of the building and also the pavement down here. So. What we'll do is we'll go through and select some of the building and then some of the pavement and just play around with putting different effects on it and such. And I'll explain through all the features of the polygonal lasso tool while we do that. So if you want to download this image and follow along yourself, there's a link in the video description. To find your polygonal lasso tool, you come over here to the left hand side. The third icon down here in the tools menu is the lasso tool. If you left click and hold, this menu will pop out and you can see there is your polygonal lasso tool in there. You can also do that by right clicking on that icon and they will pop out and then just scroll down to your lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool and click that and you've selected it and you're ready to go. So what we'll do first of all I think is select this area of the building here because that's a nice polygon and the lasso, polygonal lasso tool will do a great job of that. But before we do it we will talk through all the options up here. So this first one is your presets for the tool. So if you click this little arrow here, your presets drop down will come out and that is where you save settings for the tool that you really like, that you find work well for certain situations, your favorites. So you can do that by clicking this new tool preset button there and that'll bring up this dialogue where you can name your preset and then save it. You can also do it from this settings drop down here. You've got new tool preset at the top of the list there. There's also a lot of other options here. You can sort them by tool. You can show all tool presets. You can show the current and on and on it goes. I'm not going to go into all of that today. Now the next four icons with the squares in them, they control how the tool does what it does. So this first one with the single square is new selection. This is what it defaults to when you open it up. Next to that you have add to selection. So this will obviously add to a selection that you already have made. Then we have subtract from selection that will subtract from a selection you've already made. And then we have intersect, which will give you the area where a selection you've already made and a selection you are doing at the time overlap or intersect. We'll have a look at that in more detail a bit later. Next we have our feather control. This is a pixel value that controls the feathering of the edges of your selection. So how soft the edges are, how much they blur into the background. I will show you that in a little while. Then we have an anti-alias button. What aliasing is, is the stair-stepping edges that you get on things, the jagged edging. When you download, for example, a, an image from the internet that is not very high resolution, it'll have those jagged edges on it. Anti-aliasing attempts to remove those edges and give you a smoother edge on your selection. So I usually leave that on. If you turn it off, you'll get a much jagged edge on your selection which might be good for some um, instances but we will turn it we will check that box today next we have select and mask this is a completely different thing i've done a full video about that and have that's linked up in the cards up the top so go have a look at that so to start a selection with your lasso tool what i suggest before you select anything in photoshop is zoom in as much as you can it really makes it a lot easier so i can do that with the scroll wheel on my mouse if you don't have a scroll wheel on your mouse you can press and hold control or command and use the plus tool to zoom in sorry the plus use the plus key to zoom in on your numeric keyboard or the minus tool to zoom out and you can also use the zoom tool over here if you really want to. So what we'll do is we'll select this area of the building here. 
So to begin your selection, we'll zoom in and you see the little black arrow next to the polygonal icon there, the little polygonal lasso tool icon there. Simply click once at the point you want to start and you'll see you now have a line that you can drag anywhere you like. So we'll drag down to this point here and click again, let go, click and let go, drag this all the way down here to the corner of this building here, click and let go, drag it down here, we might go to there because it juts out a little bit at the bottom, click and let go, I'll just go in there like that, cross to here, click and let go, drag it up to where we started and you'll see a little circle pop up next to the icon, just click and your selection will be complete. You can press Control or Command Zero to zoom out to fill the screen. Now, let's say that we wanted to now change the color of that area, for example. What we'll do is we'll make a copy of our background. Always make a copy of your background layer just in case you make any mistakes and then you haven't made them to the original and you can't undo them. <laughs> now, so what we'll do is we'll go get a solid color layer and we'll put maybe a, I think we'll go red, put a red layer on top of that. Now that looks pretty terrible, <laughs> obviously. What we can do though is come up here to the layer styles drop down here and come down to overlay or soft light might be nice. I like soft light, let's choose that. And there we go, we've changed the building to the red at the front, which looks kind of cool. So I'll undo that by pressing Control Z, Control Z, and I'll just undo our selection. To cancel your selection, you can press Control or Command D, that will undo the selection that you've made. Now if at any point you are making a selection and you make a mistake, let's say I went like down in here somewhere, and I, oh whoops, I don't really want to do that, you can press backspace to undo your last selection. So that will undo, and then if you press backspace again, it will go back to the previous one, and backspace will take us right back to the start. So anytime you muck it up, just hit backspace and you'll be good to go. So let's just uh, select this bit again here. I just wanted to show you how to deselect things. So we'll just go across to here, for example, and we'll go up to the start again and finish it. Now let's say you wanted to take out some area of this, like this, maybe this triangular shape here at the edge. What you can do is press and hold Alt or Option, click and drag across to where you want it to be. Go around again, you've got to complete the whole loop. There you'll see it turn to a circle, click, and that removed your selection. If you want to add to the selection, you can also do that this way as well. So let's say we wanted to add the rest of the, or this section down here. Press and hold shift, click the starting point, drag it down, oh, drag, sorry about that. Drag it down to the bottom, click, keep holding shift the whole time, click, going up to, whoa, I've <laughs> done it again. Going up to here, we'll click to there, and then we'll go back to the start. Click, and you can see it's selected that bit for us as well. So we could uh, do whatever we like to that now. So I'll control D to undo that. Now, I will explain intersect for you. So what happens with intersect, we'll just start our selection here again, and we'll go, I won't bother with that little bit that juts out. I'll just do a bit of a triangular shape here, just up to there. Now let's say, for instance, that we only wanted, say, this part here, like from down here, this little triangle edge on the corner. What we can do is hold Alt or Option and Shift, and you can see the little cross pops up next to the polygonal icon. You click once, click once, click once, and then back till it turns to a circle, where is it? There it is. And you click again, and you'll see it gave us the bit where those two selections intersected, so where they were overlapping. So Control D to undo that. So now I want to talk about the feather control up here. 
So to do this, I will first make a selection with the setting at one pixel. So we'll just grab a bit of a section of the building here. We'll just say grab that there. We'll go down to here, click back to there to complete it. Then I'm going to turn my feathering up to say 20 pixels. We'll try 20 pixels. You can of course just click and type it in, but I'm like doing things the hard way. <laughs> okay, so now we'll add to our selection. I'll just press shift and I'll click here, come down here perhaps, across above the light pole there and I'm up there and just like to there and then to there. Now, what I will do is I will go, you can see already, see how the edges of that selection are now rounded? That's because of the feathering. The feathering changes the edges of the selection to be more softer and it makes them roundish. So we'll click on select and mask up here and this will show us our selection within here. And if I choose a different view up here in the views menu, we'll choose overlay for example and I'll turn it up to maybe 93% and if we zoom in there you can see the complete difference between those two selections right so our first selection has a really smooth kind of defined edge our other selection with the 20 pixel feathering has a really soft edge so this can help to blend things in a bit more. If you're selecting something and putting it on a new background or something, it can really help to blend it in and make it look a lot more realistic. So I'll just control zero to take it back to fill the screen there. I will control, I will cancel out of there. Control D to deselect. So that's what your feathering does. I just leave it at one pixel most of the time, but you can feel free to play around with it if you want to. So what I'll do now is I'll just make one final selection just to show you another reason why you might want to select one part of this image in this way with the polygonal tool. So what I'm gonna do is select this area of pavement here and I'm going to put another image into it. I'll put an image of something in it and make it look pretty cool. So what we're going to do is I'm clicking outside first of all because I wanna make sure that I'm selecting right to the edge of the picture. And then we'll go up to there, click once, click once, click once, and then... Now, at any stage, if you want to get out, if you want to just delete your selection and start again, you can press escape to do that. Remember before I said you could press uh, backspace to go back to the previous point. So if you want to delete the whole thing, press escape. Now, so we have a good selection there. So what we'll do, I'll make a copy of the background by dragging that down there. And we will go into Pexels here. Now, Pexels is like a, it's a free stock photo uh, plugin you can get for Photoshop and it's really quite cool. So I'll put a link in the video description to where you can download it. So if I click to insert that image there, that will come up. And what it will do is make a mess of things. So we'll just turn that off for a second. What we want to do here is create a mask with this selected area. If I just come down here to the add layer mask icon, I click that, that has now masked out that area. So if I press alt over the mask and I click, you can see that that area will show through. White shows, black hides, all right? So anything that we now do above this layer we will only show in that area so if I turn back on our image there you go we have stars in our pavement isn't that pretty cool so that's one reason why you might want to use a selection you can do that you can do so many things with selections in Photoshop it really is just amazing so there you go. That is pretty much all you need to know about the polygonal lasso tool. You should be able to use it with a lot more confidence now. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you think you might be interested in seeing more videos like this one, hit subscribe and ding the notification bell. 
and leave a comment if you have any questions or if you're feeling chatty. Remember to head over to photographersfreedom.com for more camera tutorials, gear reviews, my photography blog and also information about starting your own business with photography. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography and Photographers Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots and I'll see you soon. Thank you.